guys. So here I'm going to talk you through a method of division called the bus stop. Uh, now I would recommend using this above uh, the long division method because from experience I've found long division causes a lot of um, problems and confidence issues and uh, really these two things are identical. So the bus stop is more compact, it keeps the answer and the question closer together whereas long division works down the page and you're sort of running away from the question and I always think it looks a little bit messy. So these two, th this, is, this method is exactly the same as long division, it's just written down a little bit differently. So how do we set things up? Well, we uh, draw ourselves one of these signs here, looks almost like a square root sign, just without the tick uh, at the bottom left. Now the number that we are dividing sits inside, so if we imagine this is our bus stop, then the number that we are dividing gets put inside the bus stop. So 628 goes inside like that. Now the number that we are dividing by sits on the outside there. Now the division is pretty much the only operation where you work from the left to the right. Addition and subtraction, uh, you always work from the right to the left. And multiplication, it really depends on what method you're using. So division, we work from left to right. Very important. Okay, and then we just work across and ask how many times does two go into six, which would be three times. So we write a three up above. How many twos are in two? one and then how many twos are in eight is four so 628 divided by two is 314 okay second example 512 divided by four so again 512 goes in the middle and the four goes on the outside now when a number doesn't fit into another number exactly we get what's called a remainder as is going to happen here. So 4 goes into 5 once, but then there's one remainder. 5 take away 4 is 1. So what we do with that remainder, we write it top left of the next digit, and it acts as a 10. So now how many 4s are in 11? There's 2, uh, which would give us 8. So then the remainder off of that, 11 take away 8, would be 3, and then 4s into 32 goes eight times so 512 divided by 4 is 128 968 divided by 8 so 968 sits inside the 8 sits on the outside again we're going to get remainders flying around uh, so 8 into 9 go once and then 9 take away 8 is 1 so we've got a remainder of 1 to carry over to the 6. So that now becomes a 16. 8 into 16 go twice. And then 8 into 8 at the end goes once. Exactly. Cool. 714 divided by 6. So 714 under the sign, 6 on the outside. 6 into 7 goes once, 7 take away 6, again is once, we've got a remainder of 1, 6 into 11 goes once, now 11 take away 6 is 5, so here we've got a remainder of 5, carry a 5 over to the 4, how many 6s are in 54 is 9. 192 divided by 3, so 192 under the sign, 3 on the left. How many 3s are in 1? Right, 3 doesn't go into 1, so either we can either leave it blank above the 1 or we can put 0. And then we just treat the 1 then as a remainder, carry it over to the 9. So how many 3s are in 19? 6, which would be 18. Then we've got a remainder of 1, 3 into 12 goes 4 times. Cool. 
Okie dokie, what happens if we have a remainder at the end with nowhere to carry it? Well, let's have a look. So, let's see what's going to happen. So, 51 divided by 2, 51, and then 2. So, 2's into 5 goes twice. And there's going to be a remainder of 1. So, 2's into 11 goes 5 times. Now, we've still got a remainder of 1 there because we've got 11. 5 twos is 10. Now, what we do in this case, we put a little point zero at the end of our number that we're dividing, and we put a decimal up on the top as well, above the one on the bottom. So, 51.0 is exactly the same as 51. After a decimal point, you can put as many zeros as you like, and it doesn't change the number at all. Not even a tiny bit. So now that we've got this point zero, we've got somewhere to carry over our remainder of one. So then twos into ten goes five times. Okay, let's have a look at a few more of those. 248 divided by five. Okay, so again, we're going to end up with a remainder at the end. Uh, we know that because five only goes into numbers at either end with a 5 or a 0. Uh, so let's see what's going to happen. 5's into 2. It's not happening. doesn't go. So we put a 0 up there. Carry the 2. How many 5's are in 24? It's 4. Now we've got a remainder of 4. 5's into 48 is going to go 9 times. 5 no. Uh, Five nines is 45. Now we've got a remainder of three. So just like last time, put a little decimal and a zero after it. Make sure you put a decimal at the top as well. Then carry the remainder over to the zero. Fives into 30 is then six. So 248 divided by five is 49.6. What about a big one like this? 42,315. Divided by 6. Now don't be afraid if you come across bigger numbers. Uh, you got to just attack it a bit at a time. And it's uh, no more difficult. So 6 is into 4. Not happening. Carry the 4 over to the 2. 6 is into 42. Is going to go 7 times. No remainder. 6 into 3. It's not happening. Now, once you've got a first significant figure in at the top, zeros are very important. So that first zero up on the top, on the left, he doesn't really matter. But as soon as that seven goes in there, any zero that pops up after that, it's very important uh, because it's a placeholder. Uh, so then we we'll carry the three over to the one. Six is into 31. It's going to go five times. And then we've got a remainder of 1. Now 6 is into 15. I'm going to go twice. Uh, and then we're going to have a remainder of 3. So create ourselves a little point zero. Carry the 3. 6 is into 30. Goes 5 times. So 42,315 divided by 6 is 7,052.5. Okay, 95 divided by 4. So we don't always get uh, a single decimal place after a division. We can get as many, well, theoretically we can get any number. So this one's actually going to end up with two decimal places. Uh, let's see how. So 4's into 9 is going to go twice. 2 4's are 8. So the remainder is 1. 4's into 15 is going to go 3 times, which is 12. So we've still got a remainder of 3. Create ourselves the point zero And carry the 3 over. Now 4's into 30 is going to go 7 times. And then we've still got a remainder then of 2. 4 times 7 is 28. So create another 0. Smash a 2 on it, and then 4's into 20, 
goes five times. So 95 divided by 4 is 23.75. Job done. Okay, guys. Hope you found it useful. Uh, now then, uh, I'm going to create a have a go yourself video as well with questions and answers. So if I've done that by the time you're watching this, have a go, see how you get on. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Cheers.